Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you're watching this. Hello, welcome back to the vlog. Today is horse teeth floating day. And for those of you who don't know what teeth floating is, I will kind of share a little bit about it and then hopefully share some of the experience with you. Um, I'm using a new vet today that I've never used before. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, but basically, come on, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Come on. Just trying to get my toddler to do anything. Okay. Okay, anyway, back to what I was saying earlier. And if you hear that noise in the background, that would be my Roomba. But anyway, so teeth floating, let me turn this off because it's kind of loud. Um, so basically teeth floating with your horses in like the least uh, scientific manner of explaining this ever is shaving down your horse's teeth. Like your horse's teeth are always growing and they're getting longer. They can get really long and uncomfortable and um, they can actually get sharp like in the back um, of their mouth. And so a vet or actually an equine dentist can go back there and shave them down just so they're more comfortable. And so that can cause like a lot of things with horses. Um, Again, don't come at me. I'm not like an expert at all of this, but I know that it can cause your horse to lose weight or not keep weight on if they have obviously like teeth that are hurting them. Um, it can also uh, cause issues when you're riding them. Like if you have a bit in their mouth or if you just have a horse that is like not acting right when you're riding them and you're not really sure why, they could just be experiencing some discomfort. So it's always good to talk with a vet or have them done on a regular basis. I usually have my horses done about once a year. Um, but fun fact, sorry, I'm out of breath, very pregnant. Um, fun fact though about Nevada, is equine dentistry is actually illegal. It's not really a fun fact, it's like a sad fact because that's super annoying. <laughs> we actually have a friend here that is an equine dentist, like that is his profession and he cannot practice in his own home state. He has to go to other states. So he travels like 99% of the time for work and that's just what he has to do. And he's like a super big, big advocate for it. He, you know, tries to he's trying to make it legal here in Nevada I don't really know what all of the reasoning behind that is but it's legal in other states for some reason and not here so that's unfortunate so you have to have a vet do it which I've always had vets do it and it's fine but obviously to have a dentist do dental work versus a doctor do dental work just logically makes sense to me too so anyway fun fact of the day we'll try to get videos and pictures and stuff of the horse is getting done. I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, this is a new vet, so I'm not entirely sure if she brings like an assistant or something. Usually they do, um, just because it's kind of a two person job in some ways. Somebody has to like hold the horse. I'm hoping she has an assistant because I have to be out there with Stetson, my son. And I'm, it's kind of raining today, which is unfortunate because that just adds to the chaos. But um, basically it's like a giant drill that they use and they like, it looks pretty crazy when you see it, um, but it like goes like really far back into their jaw because their teeth go all the way back. And uh, it's kind of crazy. And the horses usually have to be drugged for it, um, obviously. Some people say they don't, they just have to twitch their horses, but my horses need the drugs, so <laughs> it's fine. So right now I'm just packing a diaper bag to leave in the car. So since it's raining, my original thought if it wasn't raining was to bring the pack and play out there and just give that a whirl and see if he would sit in there and just watch. 
But since it's raining, I have the pack and play in the car as like a backup plan. I can probably stick it in the horse stall maybe and he can watch. Uh, but that's kind of my last resort. I'm hoping I can put him in the car. I'm just gonna drive my car out there and then let it just sit and put him in that and turn on a show and hope that he just is content with that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the plan. I'm just gonna load him up on snacks and a show and uh, hopefully hopefully the vet will have an assistant so I can kind of just sit back and watch and whatever while they're doing that. Um, but if I need to step in and help deal with the horses and my toddler, it's gonna be an interesting, interesting journey. And for situations like this, where I really need Stetson to just cooperate, uh, all, all logical parenting just goes out the door as far as like giving him healthy stuff and whatever. Uh, that will be my first option is we have some crackers and some cheese sticks, which usually do the trick. Um, I also have a fruit pouch. And then worst case scenario, if he's really unhappy, I'm bringing cookies out there as my last case scenario of trying to get him to be content. Um, I'll bring a bottle of milk and then his water cup. So we agreed on 10 a.m. ish, literally ish was part of the conversation. Um, I don't know if this vet's going to run late or come early. So it's about 9.30, a little after 9.30 right now. So we'll probably just, I wanna at least get the car loaded up and drive over to where the horses are. I mean, it's literally just like two seconds away down the driveway, but um, I need to, I took the dog door out already too. So the dog can't go outside cause he's super annoying with stuff like this. <laughs> but I have both of our jackets in case he needs to come out of the car. Okay, oh, come on. Let's go. All right, we're now driving to the, where the horses are. Don't come at me right now. It's literally 20 feet away. I'm driving because it's raining. We have a golf cart thing that we usually zip around on to go feed and stuff, but I can't leave my kid in that because he won't stay in it. Why does it have to be raining today? That really just makes everything harder. Anyway, we're just really gonna be living ranch kid life today with Stetson. Yeah. I don't totally know how this is gonna go in the rain. It's really fun that it's, I haven't seen any signs of inclement weather anywhere. And of course, like on my weather app, nothing said anything about rain or snow or anything. And of course today is raining. I literally can't stand when people, which this is super ironic, and if my husband watches this, he's gonna be like, yeah, okay. Uh, Cause I'm late to like everything, but not important stuff. I'm never late to like work stuff, just like casual like life things. But um, yeah, I can't stand since becoming a mom and having a toddler. I'm understanding of parents who are late, but when people are late to like appointments and stuff, like for situations like this, it's super annoying just because like, I don't normally mind waiting, but waiting with a toddler is kind of a whole different thing. Like we're just sitting in the car trying to keep them warm. But the longer I sit here, I know my countdown clock is starting of how long he's gonna be willing to sit in the car and actually do this. So we'll see. This could be total chaos. This is like reality, I guess, of ranch wife life where your husband is not always around to help with this stuff. And this is where like, you just gotta figure out how to make things work as a mom and be able to take care of stuff around your home. And like, that probably goes for just like regular home things too. I mean, it totally does like things 
break or things like stop working or something and you have to either wait for him to get home to handle it or you gotta just figure out how to handle it on your own. So, I don't know. That's what I'm learning in this season is how to just deal with it. And it's funny because like when Setson was first born, I like really struggled with it of like doing things with a baby like it just felt really hard and you're still figuring everything out but I don't know we're almost a year and a half into this and I'm definitely a lot more confident about like toting him around with me and just making it work um and he's not the easiest kid ever so that's always been kind of like a problem for me is <laughs> like he is so busy and he just wants to run around and move and be on the ground and like he doesn't like to be worn. Like I can't strap him onto me. Like that never works. That didn't even work when he was little. He was never into it. So he's always just been an active little boy. Um, so anyway, you just gotta figure out ways to do it. Is that good snacks? That's a big bite. He's gonna be so messy. My car is gonna be absolutely destroyed by the time I get back in here. I already know it. There's gonna be crackers and snacks everywhere. Yikes. literally one night of rain and they look like this <laughs> one night I don't really know how this vet is gonna do it because every vet kind of does it differently but in the past they've like backed them up into stalls like in the corner to do this so that's kind of what I'm just preparing for but I'm not really sure well fun fact the vet came <laughs> and uh that came and she basically said that the horses don't need it. Uh, she was actually really cool. So like I said, this was the first time I've used her and I wasn't totally sure how I was going to feel about her just because on the phone call when I booked this appointment, she just didn't seem like a super warm <laughs> person, but um, she got here and I was a little nervous again because she showed up by herself. She didn't have an assistant with her. And so I was like, oh no, like I'm gonna have to hold the horses and then Stefan's gonna have to be in the car and it's gonna be a hot mess. But it ended up being really great. She got out and she was like, look, I don't float horses teeth unless they need it. And she's like, it's basically a big marketing ploy to do it every single year she's like so basically when I come out to vaccinate horses and stuff I will just check them and if they need it we'll do it great and if they don't then I'm not gonna do it she's like I'm not just gonna do it just because you're asking me to basically she's like if they don't need it I won't do it so I was like great love that logic um she just seems super honest and I love when I don't feel like I'm getting scammed out of things just for the money of it. So that was cool. But yeah, so <laughs> I have nothing to even show you because we literally just vaccinated the horses and then that was it. So they are up to date on vaccines and yeah, that's about it. Good job, babies. Nobody needs their teethies done. Love the rainy day vibes. Hate being out doing stuff in the rain. <laughs> it's kind of the worst. Uh, but I'm done for the day, so they will just... I'm just being inside the rest of the day. I probably could go run into town and run a couple errands, but <laughs> I am not gonna do that. And it's Stetson's nap time, which means this is my time to actually get stuff done. Good morning. It is a new day, but basically, horses didn't end up getting their teeth floated. I don't know if I actually told you that or not, but they didn't need it. 
Um, I actually learned a lot from this vet and I really liked her and I did not feel like I was being scammed out of a ton of money. Like sometimes it's easy to feel that way with vets because they charge a ton of money. Um, and she did not. She was like super reasonable about everything and was basically like, I'm not gonna do some sort of like procedure if they don't need it just for to get paid or whatever. So yeah, I don't know, it was good. So anyway, out here feeding. It's that time of year where I'm out here left to fend the and the elements all by myself um, in our feeding golf cart that we have. It is just the funny farm out here. Um, but yeah, so feeding, checking waters, all the things. We moved the horses a couple days ago to their winter pasture is what I like to call it. Basically the only real difference is this one's a little bit smaller. Stupid ranch dog. Um, Roscoe. The only difference really between this pasture and the other one that we keep them in during the summertime is this one's a little bit smaller. It's more of like a corral system, I guess. Like it's not just like barbed wire fencing. It's actually got like some normal gates and stuff, but it has shelters. So we put them in here for the winter so they can get out of the rain and the snow if they want to. We do not blanket our horses in the winter. I used to when I lived in California, which is funny because it doesn't get nearly as cold there as it does here. I used to blanket them. Then we moved here and I blanketed them for a little while, but they always rip them off. They destroy them. Horse blankets are expensive. I don't know. I just kind of gave up on it. My husband lived in Montana. They never blanketed any horses up there and it's obviously like way colder up there. So they don't need it. The truth of the matter is horses do not need to be blanketed. They get super furry coats in the winter if you just let them naturally grow what they're gonna naturally grow. So if you like are clipping them or if they're older and maybe not gaining as much weight then there are obviously reasons to blanket. But for these two, they don't need it. Okay, so the water's like half empty, so it shouldn't take super long to fill up, but I just had a thought since it's the morning and it's kind of cloudy and cool looking outside. Um, I need to go get some more pictures for my membership, my content membership that I have for rural and Western business owners. Um, I include stock images in it and I don't like to do this during the day that much because one, the lighting's not as good and two, um, I have my kid and he's awake, but right now it's nice outside and he's asleep, so I'm gonna go take some pictures. Okay, got the pictures that I needed to take, taken. Um, and by the time this video is up, they will be in my membership for Social Herd. So if you would like to check out what that's all about, and join or get more information or you can even join the free newsletter where I send out free content tips and advice and hacks and all the things. This doesn't still sleeping so I'm really just milking this at this point but um, I will put a link for that down in the description so you can check that out. Um, but in the meantime, I think that's going to be all for this vlog. I really have no idea how much footage I actually have. So I have to go piece everything together and then go from there. But thanks for hanging around and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.